each of the colonies before 1774 had a charter, as a grant to um, govern this area, and there was a governor usually appointed by the king. In some cases, like in Pennsylvania, the governor is appointed by the proprietor, the owner of the colony. And then there is an assembly. The assembly is elected by some segment of the voting population in Massachusetts by a town meeting, in Virginia by landowners who elect a house of Burgesses. And usually, to this lower house, this assembly will choose an upper house to consult with the governor, a council. And for most of the century, this, these governments had worked pretty well. You know, there are some political disagreements among them about various issues, but it's a fairly well working, it, it works pretty well until the 1760s when the British Empire tries to assert control. And then you see a break happening. And what happens in 1774 with the destruction of the tea in, in Massachusetts, the, gov the British government suspends the charter. And the um, Governor Hutchinson leaves. He goes back, goes to England to plead his case. And the British government sends a new governor, General Thomas Gage, who's the commander of British military forces in North America. Gage arrives with the commission to govern under the charter granted in 1691. Legislate assembly has been suspended. He doesn't want the assembly to meet in Boston. Instead, they will meet in Salem. And what happens in Massachusetts is replicated in other colonies. What you see happening is you have an official government with a governor. And a governor, in one case after another, is going to suspend the legislature because the legislature is going to side with Massachusetts. And then these legislative bodies which have been suspended will continue meeting, usually not in whatever had been the capital, but somewhere else because they've been suspended. And in Virginia, they meet in a tavern, and then they wind up leaving Williamsburg. And, then, and actually what happens in each of these cases is the royal governor winds up being driven out in one way or another. So you have rival governments being set up. One has the legitimacy of the commission from the crown, or in the case of Pennsylvania, from the proprietor. And the other seems to have the support of the voters or the people, I hate to use that word, but a uh, real divergence. So what is the legitimate government here? Is it the government of General Gage, who's now really pretty much isolated in Boston, or is it the government of the Provincial Congress meeting in Watertown? Or in Virginia, there's a Provincial Congress that emerges, really dominated by Patrick Henry, and then you know, governor, the governor, Lord Dunmore, takes refuge on a British warship. It happens in colony after colony as the Legitimate government breaks down, and there is a governor but doesn't really have any power. And then there is this provincial congress meeting or committees of safety meeting that emerge with the collapse of the British government.